Will Michael Jordan and 2311 Racing sue NASCAR? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. The biggest story coming out of Atlanta this past weekend wasn't who's the championship favorite or who's the favorite heading into Watkins Glen, but rather would 2311 Racing sue NASCAR in the future? As much as NASCAR didn't want charter negotiations to become the biggest talking point throughout the playoffs, they absolutely have. If you missed it, NASCAR delivered teams the charter proposal, their final offer uh, last Friday at around 5 or 6 p.m., depending on who you talk about, and then gave them around six to seven hours uh, to have that signed by that midnight deadline. 13 of the 15 teams did sign that uh, new agreement, locking them in for the next uh, seven years. But 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports did not sign that agreement. They said they were not comfortable with it. 2311 Racing went as far to say that NASCAR hasn't fairly allowed them to bargain on this new deal. Uh, keep in mind, negotiations have been going on for two plus years and multiple other owners are basically like, we felt like we were just at the end of the road, that we were going to get as much as we were going to get. And as Rick Hendrick said, I was tired but did go on to say that he did believe that they got a fair deal out of it. They got some of what they wanted. They didn't get some of the other things that they wanted. 2311 Racing is not getting what they wanted, which is why we're in this position that we are currently in. So this past weekend in Atlanta, Curtis Polk, who's an active investor in 2311 Racing and basically Michael Jordan's right-hand man when it comes to business dealings, spoke to the media. And he wouldn't go as far as saying that the team would pursue legal action. They have consulted with the, one of the nation's top antitrust lawyers, which was hired on retainer by the RTA, the Race Team Alliance, which was all 15 NASCAR Cup Series teams uh, that currently hold charters in the event that they didn't come to an agreement and then they would have to pursue legal action against NASCAR in that situation. He wouldn't go as far to say that. He did say that he views 2311 Racing as the David versus Goliath in this in this situation here. But Curtis did go as far to say that the charter was, quote, particularly harmful to our operations and our ownership group's interest in intellectual properties. So one of the biggest holdups here uh, with the 2311 side of things is the fact that they want to make sure that they control their IP, so their intellectual property, which I can absolutely get on board with here. They also are very concerned about the disparagement clause that was put in into the most recent proposal by NASCAR, where essentially you can't say anything bad about NASCAR. Now, I am on their side in this because I believe that discourse is healthy for everything. I think you should have both sides to every story. Not everybody is going to be lollipop and rainbows around here. Uh, sometimes things just need to be said that need to be said. And if you don't like something, you should be able to say it. Now, Keep in mind, I completely understand this is NASCAR's court. They own the ball, they own the court, they own the goals, they own everything here. So if you don't want to play, you can go ahead and, you know, hit the street. Completely understand that. But at the same time, I, I think it's a good thing to have uh, disagreements and have different opinions, because if everybody has the same idea and thinks the same way, you're not going to necessarily grow from that. So. I get what they're arguing here. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I currently have the Camber sunglasses on. The classics are another favorite of mine as well. So drivensunglasses.com. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout. 20% off plus free shipping. But now I think the biggest question is, do they actually have a legal case for this? And I honestly don't think they do, at least not a slam dunk case at that. And one that would have to take a lot of persuasion to get a judge to actually take this case just because of the fact that 13 of the 15 teams did sign. So that kind of takes your antitrust thing a little bit off the table there, because like I said, you got 13 of the 15 that sign. It's hard to argue that you're not getting a fair deal when the vast majority believes that, you know what, this is the best deal we're going to get. We're going to go ahead and sign that. So legally, there are a few options they could take, I assume, in terms of that antitrust uh avenue uh, and whether or not like they control their ip that could be something else that they go after but it's not exactly like this slam dunk thing where you're like oh they absolutely are going to pursue legal action because they're going to win it's very much up in the air at this point i think that 2311's best leverage because the best leverage that they had was the 13 other teams but they went ahead and signed their best leverage now is the threat of a lawsuit that would maybe you know persuade NASCAR to make concessions here, whether that be to get rid of the disparagement clause, get rid of something else. But you have to keep in mind, 13 of the other teams already signed that new charter agreement. So there would have to be some sort of amendments made there before it's ratified, essentially. 
And I'm not sure NASCAR wants to make those concessions, but the threat of them pursuing legal action might be enough to convince NASCAR to make these concessions because NASCAR, of course, is a privately held company, much like the NFL. They do not want to go to court and have to open up their books because they don't want anybody to know just how much money they are actually making, what they're spending their money on, what money is being spent in what areas. They don't want to do that. And that's they're prerogative, right? They're a private company. Of course, nobody wants to do that at all. And that part of it might have Curtis Polk a little bit fired up because he says, quote, this isn't the 1960s and these predatory practices will not withstand scrutiny and be accepted in 2024. NASCAR has superior bargaining power and undue influence over the sport and the charter process. They wielded this power continuously over the past few months and consistently rejected broad, broad team requests on major issues while providing minor changes for pet issues that some teams requested in one on one meetings. So essentially, Curtis is upset that NASCAR made some concessions, you know, on these little tiny things by request of certain teams when they had one on one meetings because NASCAR would not meet with the RTA as a whole. Jim France instead preferred to meet with teams on a team by team basis, divide and conquer good old fashioned union busting again privately held company, their prerogative. There's no collective bargaining agreement here. There's no unions. He is under no obligations to meet with all of them. And he did not, which is why we're in the position that we're in currently. Um, in terms of the predatory practices, again, this is a privately held company and you don't have to participate if you do not want to. There are options out there for 2311 Racing, which includes doing their own thing. Will they do that? Remains to be seen. So now the biggest question is if they do pursue legal action, what happens with their charters? Because NASCAR has already said if you didn't sign by that deadline, you would be losing your charters. And if 2311 Racing and Front Row don't sign, December 31st comes around in just a few months, they lose their charters. They're losing out on 2311's case with their two, three charters that they have, same with Front Row Motorsports. We're talking about an 80 to $100 million loss just in charters right there. And then what happens with those six charters that are currently being held by them? Does NASCAR field teams of their own next year? Do they pawn them out to somebody else? It will be very interesting to see how all of that plays out. But for now, the legal action, I think it's more of a... Uh, more of a bluff than anything. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're going to go down that avenue. Yes, it would create headlines around the world. Michael Jordan suing NASCAR is a big time headline. That's making Sports Center. That's making ESPN. That's making the front page of basically every uh, website in the in the world right now. But are they actually going to do it? I would definitely lean towards no. I think there will be some sort of compromise that comes out of this, and not a big compromise at that. Probably just NASCAR, as Curtis Polk said you know, giving into a few pet issues that 2311 Racing has. Ultimately, the other team signed. They believe that they can build a business model around it. 2311 Racing has come in, been the contrarian, been the uh, the Gen Zers, if you will, where everything has to be a slight bit of an issue and we have to argue about everything, which I don't necessarily disagree with 2311 Racing. Don't get me wrong. I understand where they're coming from here. Uh, but ultimately, you kind of have to just know what court you're playing in and, you know, act accordingly at that. Yes, get as much money as you can. And teams did get a nice bump up in in uh, revenue from 25% to 40%. That's great for them. Um, but in terms of everything else, you're asking for a lot and you have to know who you're negotiating against and they're probably not going to give that up. So I'm interested to hear what people think. Does anybody even actually care if 2311 Racing does sue NASCAR? It would certainly be an interesting time. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.